You know, as you know, in life, just about everything has positives and negatives. There's, there's benefits to things and then there are drawbacks to things. And they almost always work in concert together. When you add one, you take away from something else. And so there, there again, good and bad things about virtually everything in life. And the same is true of small groups. There are advantages and there are certainly disadvantages to small groups as we're all aware as well. So let's take a look at some of those, you know, what are the reasons we work in small groups and what are the advantages and disadvantages to doing so as well as a couple of, you know, broad tips that we can use to improve our group experiences. So first let's take a look at some of the advantages, some of the positives, the pros, the reasons we work in small groups. First of all, shared decision-making that can make it easier for everybody, both in the sense of you can feel more confident knowing that your decision is supported by others and that you're sharing that load with others. You're sharing that responsibility with others. Uh, you're also bringing in more perspectives in that decision-making and, and it just kind of you know, spreads it out a little bit more. It's not one individual and all the weights on them. And, and so it can just make decision-making a little bit easier in that sense, not necessarily the process of decision-making of course, but, but the idea of decision-making can be benefited by working in a group. You also have this idea of shared resources. You bring in, everybody brings in their own stuff. You bring in not only your own physical resources and, and but, uh, but your own intellectual resources and your, in your, you know, many hands make light work in a sense of you're all bringing things in. And so you have the opportunity to share those things and work collaboratively uh, together in an effective group. You're working collaborative, collaboratively and, uh, and filling in the gaps for other people. You're bringing in people that, with skill sets that complement yours and, and, uh, and working with them so that, that you're filling those gaps and you, and you have those shared resources though. People bring in different resources then. You also have this idea of synergy. Right. Synergy is, is you know, the, the idea that, uh, that one plus one equals three, not just two, but, you know, individually we might be able to do this and you can do that. But when we get together, we can multiply that and get even more than we could, even just on in our individual selves, if that makes sense. We push each other and can we, we work together to, to fill the gaps. We complement each other's um, weaknesses. We bring, uh, you know, different things to the table. And through all of that, we drive each other to greater heights than we would achieve as, as individuals, as three individuals or four individuals or whatever that group effort brings that kind of exponential benefit of sy synergy as well. And just an exposure to diversity is another advantage to small groups. It diversifies not just our exposure to people from different cultures and different, you know, different nationalities and different races and things like that, which is fantastic. It broadens our exposure to that kind of diversity, certainly, and, and broadens our world, opens our world up in that regard, hopefully gives us, you know, we have direct experience with people from different cultures. It gives us a whole new perspective on that culture and can really um, change the way we see people of different backgrounds, right? But also exposure to this intellectual diversity, different ideas, different ways of doing things that exposes us to those types of things really broadens our horizon in that respect as well. So it just brings in new um, knowledge and new um, interactions with people that we might not otherwise have and, and just makes us a more complete person. Uh, even moving forward after that group experience is done, we still have that, that knowledge and that, that new information, that new way of thinking that care that we carry with us even after that experience. So that exposure to diversity in all forms is really, really uh, important and a really big advantage of working in small groups. Now, again, we, we, we need to recognize though, that there are some disadvantages, some things that aren't as great about working in small groups. Um, first of all, it, it, you may be in a group where it's unnecessary, where you think you have one person that, that has all these skills and can do this on their own and everybody else is just kind of there for fluff, right? And just there to be there. So you have to really I identify as this group necessary, or is this a simple enough task or a specific enough task that it could be handled by one person and the rest of the people here are really kind of unnecessary and, and just kind of taking up their time. So we need to identify that that sometimes happens, that, that, that a group may be unnecessary. You may also encounter interpersonal challenges within a group. Anytime you put, you know, a, a group of people in a room, there's the potential for these interpersonal conflicts to get in the way that you wouldn't have if you're working on your own, or maybe with just one person that you get to choose. Uh, but you're working with somebody who, you know, quite frankly, brings something to the group that you may not have, that you may need this person, but at the same time, they rub you the wrong way and just bring these interpersonal challenges in some ways. That you, you, so that's an, a disadvantage of working in groups is that you're going to have these little conflicts, right? You may also uh, in, in a group, see someone who's uh, engaging in social loafing, meaning they're just kind of 
riding the coattails of the group. They're just hanging on and, and they're not really pitching in. They're not really doing enough work. And yet they're getting the credit for it because they're part of the group, right? They're um, part of that team. So they're getting credit for what the team accomplishes, but they're not really contributing anything. They're just kind of, again, riding that wave they're, they're, and, and, and grabbing onto the coattails, the people that are in that group. So you, you see that that's a disadvantage of a small group that people will engage in social loafing. And, you know, one final disadvantage is the, the potential for groupthink that, that, you know, all the people decide to jump off the cliff at the same time, right? Because they all get wrapped up in this idea that this is the right thing to do. And, and they get blinders on toward some of the negatives that may happen. You know, the, this, this idea of groupthink is one person leading the charge and, and everybody falls in line, even though they're all, again, kind of falling off the cliff there. So there's the potential for groupthink when you work in a group. We have to be cautious of that. Now, there are some things that we can do to improve our group experiences. And we're just going to talk broadly here because the rest of the series is going to be obviously about specific things we can do to uh, engage effectively in groups, but just some broad tips um, for, for just out of the gate, things that we can do to improve our group experiences. Uh, first of all, we can study effective techniques. We can do what you're doing by following this series and, and, and engaging and in learning about what it means to work in small groups. What are some effective techniques and, and tactics for working in group? How can we improve our own communication skills and, and effectiveness in groups? And so we can study these things. It's, these are skills we can learn. We can learn how to work better in groups and how to manage our group experiences better. And so we can study these things and get better by learning about how to do these things. So study effective techniques is one way that we can improve our group experiences. Another thing, when we're in a group, we can meet as often as possible. That doesn't mean we have to meet every day, and that doesn't mean it has to take over our lives, but we need to meet often. That's what allows us to, to develop those real relational connections, get to know those people um, and how they work and, and draft off of one another, share experiences, things like that. Um, so we need to meet relatively often as a group. If you're a group meeting once a year, that's not going to be effective. you got to meet not every day necessarily, but as often as, as you can in order to, to develop that group cohesiveness and really um, gel together and find that shared identity that's important in group work. And then we can collaborate to establish group expectations. At the very outset of a group, we can get together and determine what is it we're trying to accomplish? What are, what are the different roles we need filled in here? And how can we best meet the needs of the group as individuals and contribute to that and develop that kind of synergy? But we can really, you know, establish some very specific expectations we can create. We're going to talk about in another series, you know, things like creating a group charter. A communication charter. What are the expectations for response times in a group? What are the expectations for how we will communicate and how we will collaborate even when we're not together? What are the expectations for how we will behave when we are together when we're meeting as a group? We can collaborate together to create a charter, create some expectations around what we're going to do, what the expectations are, and what's going to happen if people aren't following that. You know, we can even determine that. So we can establish our own kind of system and, and expectations in that and work together to establish those right up front. So there are, again, good things and bad things about working as a group. On the whole, we find that effective groups do better work in, in, in complicated and complex problem solving you know, situations than individuals do. So that's why we continue to have groups and, and be forced to kind of work in groups, right? Um, so, so it can be effective in the right circumstances and when people put in the work. But there are also disadvantages we need to recognize and try and minimize those things. That's what we're going to focus on in the rest of this series, some specific um, details about how we can do that and tactics for doing that as we think about working in groups. If you have questions about working in small groups, communicating in small groups, feel free to email me. Uh, I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope that you have uh, you know, a, a recognition of these advantages and also the disadvantages going into group growth with our eyes wide open, but establishing some of those, you know, and working with some of those tips and techniques that we can use to make this a more effective experience for everyone involved in the small group.